thank you, Vice Admiral Griggs. May I say that uh, I am very proud of our Chief of Navy. I hope in the last two days you have come to understand why I'm very proud of him. He provides very good advice to me. He's a good friend uh, in the difficult things that Navy has to do from time to time in Australia. Um, can I uh, acknowledge the Chiefs of Navies that are here from all of the countries um, on the Indian Ocean, the heads of Coast Guards, Marine Police, academics and Navy personnel generally? It's a bit late, but welcome to Perth. I was supposed to be here yesterday. Forgive me, I had some very um, difficult and busy things to do in Canberra. We're sitting over in Canberra in Parliament at the moment. I hope that you have in the couple of days that you're having in Perth come to appreciate my home town, as I do. Um, it has a sky the colour of nowhere else in the world, in my humble opinion. And, uh, I hope Admiral Griggs hasn't worked you all too hard so that you haven't had any R&R. &R. Now, tonight we're going to have a bit of R&R &R and I look forward to bringing my wife along and enjoying your company tonight um, and uh, enjoying a bit of Perth hospitality. A little more seriously, in recent days I want to say that I've been observing and I've been out to the PS Air Force Base to watch the um, progress of the search for Malaysian Airlines Flight 370. Um, this is, of course, as we all know, a terrible tragedy and I offer my condolences to the family and friends uh, and to the passengers and crew of that aircraft. It once again underlines and exemplifies a number of matters to me as a sailor. Um, firstly, the vast size and power of our Indian Ocean, an ocean that I grew up with. The inability of any one nation to be able to respond alone to all of the contingencies that the isolation and vastness of the Indian Ocean throws up is of course underlined and underlines the need for cooperation. If there's any good to come out of this um, episode, it is the example of cooperation we have seen in the search effort with ships and aircraft from Australia, New Zealand, Japan, China, United States, Republic of Korea and additional ships and aircraft on the way from Malaysia, the United States and of course the United Kingdom. I had lunch, you might be interested to know, on Tuesday with uh, Senior Colonel Chen from the PLA and with Commander I Iwamasa from uh, the Japanese Self-Defence Force. A most enjoyable lunch focusing on a common goal and that is to find uh, the debris field of this aircraft. It is my sincere hope that the habits of cooperation we see in this situation can be extended and carried on to the spheres of other activities. Ladies and gentlemen, I think the Indian Ocean region is a very, very great part of the world. From the roaring 40s and the Cape of Good Hope in the south, up the coast of Africa to the Strait of Hormuz and the Persian Gulf, across the Great Arc from India to Indonesia, there are diverse treasures and wonderful opportunities for the nations of this region. I should pause to say that one of the only reasons we're here in Western Australia is because several hundred years ago a whole lot of Dutch sa sailors failed to get the turn left right as they came across the Roaring Forties and many of them were wrecked on the coast of the state in the land that you now are visiting. This symposium, which I'm glad I've just been able to catch the end of, has covered so many of the issues which affect all of us. I understand it has been a data-rich environment, particularly today, and I've glanced through the, uh, the abstract booklet that I have and uh, acknowledged the very fine contributions of all of the speakers and the interaction that's gone on. From a Western Australian perspective, our ability to trade freely, efficiently and reliably is fundamental to the prosperity and the security of not just my state but all of the nations that border this great Indian Ocean. The passage of fuels, crude and natural gas, is crucial for many nations and, and indeed um, energy is, as we all know, one of the most crucial commodities that any country um, can secure. This region has important producers and consumers and it exports energy to many parts of the world. From a Western Australian perspective, I'm keenly aware of the vibrancy of the energy industry. Can I also say there's an awful lot of agriculture produced in my home state. Last year we produced 15 million tonnes of wheat, not one grain stayed in our state, it was all exported. We produce minerals, we have uh, a whole host of uh, precious metals, uh, lead, copper, zinc, 
and the like, all of which is exported. Security of sea lanes is fundamental to our way of life here in Australia and to our uh, national prosperity. The prosperity of our region is driving much more extensive maritime trade within the Great Indian Ocean. To foster this growth, port infrastructure, ship security, the law of the sea and a healthy civilian shipping industry are simply fundamental and crucial. This symposium has covered these issues, highlighting their current state and identifying the future risks and opportunities and challenges that we all must deal with. Certainly, the security architecture of the region is one opportunity. Notwithstanding the diversity, there are many common interests. And there are many issues which require our coordinated effort if we are to be able to take effective action. The management of fishery resources, both coastal and high seas, directly supports food security in our region. The reconciliation of the different uses of the sea between coastal fishing and maritime trading routes is something worthy of a great deal more of further attention. Indeed, as the intensity of our use of the sea increases, coordinated management of marine areas will become more and more important. And I suspect we will have yet more uses of the sea to integrate, as was suggested by those who've looked at seabed mining. A very interesting topic, may I say. As our use of the sea increases, the number of participants in marine areas will increase, the value of our infrastructure and resources will increase, and the importance of our trade will increase. We can already see that, that the traditional participants in the marine environment being joined by non-state actors, and this will only make the security management challenge ever more complex. With all of this going on, it is appropriate the symposium has also discussed the security architecture of the region. Because of all of these great benefits, trade, food and energy resources are based on that simple premise, the premise of good order at sea. So easy to say, but so hard often actually to do. Here it seems the Indian Ocean Naval Symposium has great potential to play a positive role in that security architecture. I believe this will be of great advantage to all of the nations of the region. I thank you for joining us here and for the contributions you have made to the symposium. I do wish you safe travel home. Uh, I look forward to meeting you in the future and invite you to bring your families on your next holidays down to Perth again and show them and tell them about, when you tell them about what you've seen, bring them down and show them exactly uh, what we have to offer here in Perth. Uh, I'm very pleased that I was able to get um, the Chief of Navy across from the Eastern States. It's not often that he comes to Western Australia. I've achieved something in that. Um, it is my honour, sincerely, ladies and gentlemen, to declare this symposium closed. I look forward to seeing you all tonight, and I thank you for your attendance here in Perth, and uh, uh, it's just been a, a fabulous event for Western Australia. Thank you all for coming. Thank you.